Hello, I'm here with Father Spiridon, who's going to talk about his latest book, The UFO Deception. Father, first of all, why did you write about UFOs? It may seem a strange thing, a priest writing about UFOs, but I was prompted to do so by a number of things. First of all, there's a chapter in Father Seraphim Rose's book, Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future, talking about UFOs and the connection between other occult events. And I wanted to pursue a lot of the topics that he raised there. But also, more personally, a member of my family, a number of members of the family actually, had a close encounter with a UFO um, back in the late 70s. And this was an event that, uh, although it's been of interest to me in conversation, not something that we've really focused on or discussed, and I, I wanted to see how that tied in with what I, I was reading about and the research that I was discovering really was raising all kinds of connections that I hadn't previously known about. And then thirdly, just a brief glance, glimpse at uh, what's going on on the internet. Um, there are so many sites, so many people becoming very interested in this phenomenon, uh, rather than waning since the 70s when Father Seraphim was writing his book, it seems that the topic has gained more interest and so I thought it would be important to just bring an orthodox perspective on this whole subject. So where does the deception of the title come in? Well, as I researched the topic, um, I found really two major deceptions taking place. The first is a human deception. There's lots of evidence that I provide in the book that shows that government agencies, military agencies, are perpetrating an enormous deception that's been going on for decades, since the, the mid-1940s. People's descriptions of the, the phenomenon, their encounters, their eyewitness accounts have been distorted, suppressed. People have been bullied, people have been silenced. People have been deliberately misled. And there's lots of evidence that I provide that this is taking place. But secondly, and more importantly, there is a spiritual deception taking place. The major error I came to the conclusion was we cannot lump all UFO phenomenon into one category. There are very many different things taking place. Some of it is military, some of it is secret agency work, but there is a spiritual dimension and the deception that I'm most concerned about is certainly demonic. So you, you mention as well quite a lot of famous names, Carl Sagan, Valet Young. How do they fit into the Again, for decades, people have been promoting a certain narrative. Carl Sagan, although he rejected the idea that Earth itself was being visited by alien beings, promoted the idea that Earth or human beings could contact alien life on other planets. The whole project of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, was based on a philosophy a theory about what it is to exist. The nature of the universe, the nature of man, our relation to existence itself underpins many of these approaches to alien life and extraterrestrials. Certainly in the work of Carl Sagan I quote many many references that show that Carl Sagan was opposed, very opposed to traditional faith, traditional belief, specifically Christianity. Jacques Vallée has been a proponent of the whole idea of other dimensions and as we see the development of ideas about UFOs and extraterrestrials the development is very much in the direction of believing that human beings are being contacted by beings from another dimension because many of these UFO eyewitness accounts describe something that clearly doesn't fit what mechanical spaceships or mechanical devices are capable of. Even technology that is beyond their own doesn't fit into this category. Carl Jung uh, was very interested. He wrote himself for decades. He researched and showed interest in this topic but also as with so many of the the different people I talk about in the book, Carl Jung had very serious interest in occult topics and his interest in UFOs stems from his occultism. There are many books already on UFOs. How is an orthodox perspective different? There are. 
and many of them are trying to explain the UFO phenomenon from a psychological or a scientific perspective. The whole paradigm is very materialistic and humanistic. And unfortunately, the conclusions that these kind of researchers reach are inadequate to answer the, the nature of the true phenomenon. When we want to truly understand what's taking place, we have to apply the teaching of the Church Fathers, the teaching of the saints, and the experiences of the saints. Many saints have had experiences in their lives that match precisely what we now call UFOs. So this is not a new phenomenon. And indeed, many researchers, conspiracy theorists, some people would call them, have tried to make out that historically UFOs have appeared in, in art and iconography and so on. But in reality, what we're talking about here is the demonic. And the demonic can only, only be understood and explained from the perspective of the Church Fathers. Another thing you write about is science fiction. Can you say something about that? One of the themes of the book is the way that a cultural perception has been guided, moulded, um, and UFOs, in a way, are the consequence of this, but they're also part of this guidance of what culture is about. Uh, there is lots of evidence to show that people like the CIA and various groups within government agencies are using movies, movie, using television and fiction to guide public perception. And this is very clearly the case when we talk about UFOs. Science fiction has enabled many, many people to be open, to accept the idea that aliens will visit us. People have even been drawn into a paradigm of believing that many, many planets may have life. And of course, this is a consequence of evolution, evolutionary theories. Evolutionary theory underpins many of this science fiction pieces of fiction. When we look at the idea that life is possible elsewhere, we have to accept, if we accept that paradigm, that life is an accident, that life is possible anywhere, that life has no supreme purpose or meaning here on earth. And as an Orthodox Christian, I would reject this. The Fathers teach us that life is particular to earth. Life is special, it is created. It is not an accident, a chemical reaction. It is not an accident of electricity or some other input of the chemicals and, and microbes. It is a creation of God. Life itself is a creation of God. And once we grasp that there's something unique about Earth, the idea of life on other planets becomes preposterous. So this this rejection has been broken down through science fiction, through popular media, through our culture. NASA, for example, I have a, an awful lot of references from astronauts and members of NASA talking about this. And then we find, once again, their own writings, their own theories are heavily influenced by Eastern religions and by occultism. This is a constant theme throughout the later part of the book. Occultism is a great influence on our culture. And yet it's presented as science. It's presented as that which is natural. And this is not the case. And where do you see this phenomenon leading? Already we're seeing which direction it's heading. There is um, one of the key speakers on this uh, phenomenon called Dr. Stephen Greer. He, he, he's financed by Netflix. He's got various programs and research uh, funds. Lots of money has been made available to him to promote the idea that UFOs can be contacted, that ETs will be encountered through the practice of meditation and various occult practices. So this is clearly the direction in which this is taken now. It's not just a suspicion anymore. We're seeing it very openly prescribed by those who believe in UFOs. My personal belief is that this is going to become a stronger phenomenon, but also it's, the UFO phenomenon is going to be used in some way perhaps to manipulate or determine public opinion or attitudes to something more. 
The technology now exists to, to fake UFOs to an even greater extent than's happened in the past. And I think this is one of the real dangers that we're facing. Thank you, thank you very much, Father, and thank you for writing this book. Thank you.